So I'm not normally a movie reviewer or a film critic or anything like that, but I really, really, really liked Dune Part 1, so I wanted to review Dune Part 2. I saw it just now, like I just left the theater within the last half hour, and I want to talk about it. I'm going to start off with a brief, spoiler-free kind of overview and flavor of this movie, and then I'll dive into spoilers in a little bit. And due to the off-the-cuff nature of this video, I'm not going to be delving deep into what this movie did differently from the books. I might mention a couple of things here and there, but largely speaking, I'm going to be evaluating this movie as a film and a continuation of Dune Part 1, not as it pertains to the book. As far as non-spoilers go, this movie is incredible, start to finish soundtrack, sound design, performances, atmosphere, sets, effects, everything about this movie is firing on all cylinders from beginning to end. And it feels cohesive compared to Dune Part 1. Dune Part 1 is an incredible movie, don't get me wrong. I thought Dune Part 1 was exceptional, but there's a lot of exposition and a lot of groundwork being laid. And Dune Part 2, as a result of all the foundations and all the groundwork that was laid in Dune Part 1, Dune Part 2 comes out swinging and it does not stop swinging until the end of the movie. For my money, there's not a single weak link in this movie. Absolutely no part of the production suffers in any way, shape, or form. No issues with pacing, no weird performances, no deficiencies with the music, the effects. Absolutely everything was exceptional. This is the type of movie that you finish it and you walk out of the theater feeling like you're in slow motion. I'm gonna see this movie so many times. It does not matter that I do not have the money and I cannot afford to see this movie a bunch of times. I am going to see this movie so many times. I don't want to overstate it too much in the spoiler-free section, but Denis Villeneuve is a technician. This movie is a masterpiece. I think you are doing yourself a disservice if you don't see it. Again, provided that you saw Dune Part 1 and you liked it, you cannot see this movie having not seen Dune Part 1. It is called Dune Part 2 for a reason. You have to have seen Part 1. So those are my spoiler-free opinions. Now I'm going to get into spoilery opinions. Again, these aren't going to be deep, crazy, essential spoilers, but I am going to talk about plot points from the movie and how different things made me feel. There is so much to talk about with this movie. First things first, I gotta get it out of the way. I, as a person, have not always had nice things to say about Timothy Chalamet. I, I've never thought he was bad or anything, but I've always been in the camp of people who think Timothy Chalamet is a little overrated and he's like this Hollywood pretty boy who just has an easy time and isn't that great. I was not correct because he is a force in this movie. To the extent where I wouldn't be surprised if he gets nominated for Best Actor for this movie. He was that good. The way Timothy Chalamet portrays the transition from the son of a duke to the emperor of the known universe is insane. He does such a phenomenal job. He is commanding and powerful and terrifying and oh my goodness. As far as the performances go, Timothy Chalamet is the absolute standout of this movie. I feel like he didn't do that much, and he didn't have to do that much in the first movie. Maybe that's just compared to this movie, because I just watched Dune again last night, the last night before it went off Netflix, and Timothy Chalamet is great in Dune Part 1, but there's nothing exceptional about him, and he is playing a boy, and in this movie, he is playing a man not even a man, he is playing a king, a leader, a religious figure. He is someone that needs to command, and he is someone to be worshipped by the people that worship him. And Timothy Chalamet freaking did it. Now that I've sung Timothy Chalamet's praises, all the other performances in this movie were excellent. Rebecca Ferguson was commanding and sinister. Austin Butler as Fade Rautha was unhinged and crazy. It was cool seeing Stellan Skarsgård back as the Baron. Javier Bardem did an exceptional job as Stilgar, possibly best supporting actor worthy job as Stilgar. He was really, really good. Josh Brolin, Florence Pugh, fun to watch. Anya Taylor-Joy was in this movie for five seconds, literally five seconds. Good for her. Excited to see her in Dune Part 3. No issues with the performances in this movie. Everybody was great. Timothy Chalamet was the peak. I think after that, probably Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem were both exceptional 
exceptional performances from them. Christopher Walken was fine. I thought Christopher Walken would be distracting in this movie, you know, because he's got that he's got that that voice. You know, he's so Christopher Walken that I I thought he would be a distraction in this movie, and he wasn't. Uh, another shout out to Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista did a great job in this movie. He really has chops, like surprising chops. It was cool to see them on display in this movie. Zendaya is also exceptional in this movie. She is so engaging. She does so much great acting with her eyes. And she is like the one person who understands the import of what's going on. She's the only person who really seems to see what Paul can become and what he is becoming as the film goes on and seeing her with her eyes narrowed and just like not down with it. It's really, really good. And it's really compelling. And her chemistry with Timothy Chalamet at the beginning of the movie is also excellent. There's a large arc through this movie, like a large overarching character arc as it pertains to Paul and at the beginning, it builds so well on what they start at the end of Dune Part 1. Paul and Chani's relationship is so tender, and it's it's cute, and it's believable as well, which I think is, it, was, it would have been easy for that to not be believable. It would have been easy for their romance and their chemistry to feel rushed and poorly handled, and I didn't think that was the case. Though they get together pretty quickly, that first kiss between them happens in the first half hour, I didn't think that was a bad thing. I thought the pace of it was fine, and I thought it was believable and interesting, and I liked it a lot. So performances are out of the way. I want to move over to how the movie was structured and how it, I guess just how it made me feel in general. Opening up right off the bat, I love the way that this movie explored the Fremen. It got us into the siege. We got to see battle tactics. We see the warmth and the community and how together the Fremen are as a group. We see this connectedness in the Fremen and it's immediately juxtaposed to the coldness and the sterility of Gaiety Prime and the Harkonnens. And they're just, as forces, they are diametrically opposed. Like we have the Fremen here, the Fremen, this warm, loving, in touch with itself community. And then you have the Harkins who are cold and bloodthirsty and detached and disgusting. And I love the way that Denis Villeneuve contrasts the two of them and he contrasts them in every way. The musical themes are different. The color palette is totally different. Like the duel with Fade Rautha in the arena is black and white pretty much. And that's following directly after these beautiful sunny desert scenes with uh, with all the Fremen, so masterfully done. Uh, when Paul rode the worm, I pissed my pants. That was one of my favorite moments in film that I have ever seen. And the music, like that Hans Zimmer music that's playing in the background, it just washes over you and it consumes you. And it, it happens a number of times, but... The movie felt so huge and heavy and enormous when Paul was riding that worm. I just about jumped out of my chair. It was fist pumpingly awesome. I'm not really a Dune novel aficionado, so talking about the differences between the book and the movie, it's, it's difficult for me to do it because I haven't read Dune all that recently. There were two things that stuck out to me as being different, like two pretty major things in the book that the movie didn't have, uh, and that was James's wife not being mentioned and James's family not being taken under Paul's wing, I guess. That wasn't mentioned, and for the better, I think. And we didn't see Paul's younger sister, Aaliyah, in this movie. She was in utero for the entire movie, which is also, I think, a good choice. I think if you were to have Aaliyah walking around as a toddler, speaking to people, there would be either weird uncanny valley visual effects, or it would have, I think it would have taken away from the scope of the movie and its pacing. I like that she just communicated with Jessica Ferguson from the womb and they spoke to each other like that, as opposed to having her walk around in the siege and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I feel like I could sit here and ramble about this movie all day long. The sets, were so cool. The the way that they developed the ships, the time that we spend in the sand, like seeing all these people pop out of the sand, the warfare that's involved with the spice harvesters, the score the entire time, the score of this movie and the way it interweaves with the sound design is 
so mind-blowingly masterful. I just, I have never seen, Dune Part 1 is like this as well, but I, I have just never seen a movie that weaves its music and its sound design so carefully together. And the music and sound design are so heightened and so together throughout the whole movie that when it gets to Paul and Fade Rautha's fight and there's just silence, nothing but the sound of them fighting and struggling, it is so tense and engaging and awesome. Like, it, it's interesting the way that they built up that sensory experience with the sound design and the music throughout the whole movie. So you're getting pounded with this wall of sound, wall of music, all this crazy sound design. And then when it comes time for that huge conflict, the all important conflict, silence. It was such a cool choice. I loved everything about it. Final thoughts to bring everything that I've said together. This movie is a masterpiece in every way. There's no debating it for me. Denis Villeneuve is a director that, in my opinion, has yet to miss. And this is like his fourth, fifth, sixth home run, Grand Slam home run in a row. This movie is exceptional. There's not a single element that drags it down. It's for me, it's a 10 out of 10. A plus. No question. If you've watched this far into this chaotic, disorganized review, thank you so much. If you want to support me, I have a Patreon and a podcast, which are linked down in the description if you want to check them out. And I'll see you in the next one.